my friends welcome to the interesting aspect of md crack series that is mcq discussion so here i will discuss uh, almost around 200 questions almost 100 questions in the general pathology and 100 questions in the systemic pathology so both are equally important so i'll start the first session the question is most severe injurious stimulus to cell is options hypoxia ischemia bacterial infection vitamin deficiencies so which is the most severe injurious stimuli so if you go back and see the injurious stimuli to the cell injury i have discussed in the cell injury chapter big ponic that is the mnemonic i have made so so many bacterial infections can cause immunological reactions can cause even autoimmune disorders can cause hypoxia ischemia yes in fact all of these are the injurious stimuli to the cells but which is most severe you have to answer what is hypoxia hypoxia is loss of oxygen supply what is ischemia loss of blood supply so whenever there is a ischemia there will be not only lack of oxygen supply there will be also lack of glucose supply to the tissues right yes bacterial infections yes there are so many bacteria which are highly lethal like our uh, gram negative bacteria proteus klebsiella e coli we have a drug resistant uh, bacteria staph aureus methicillin resistant so they also can cause very severe injury yes we have vitamin deficiencies vitamin a b c d e all those things can cause the injury right but which is most severe form which is most severe injurious yes yes it is the ischemia lack of blood supply it not only hampers the tissue oxygenation it also decreases it also hampers the glucose supply to the tissues so in that way ischemia is more severe form of injurious stimulus as compared to the hypoxia so answer should be ischemia second question most important target of a cell injury is the options are cell membrane nucleus endoplasmic reticulum mitochondria you have to tell which is the most important target of a cell injury yes we have the four options now cell membrane which is very important for regulating the ions inside and out of a cell right that's also most important we have the second option that is nucleus you know nucleus is the master regulator of the cell all the activities inside the cell is well controlled by the nucleus that option we have the third option we have this endoplasmic reticulum the one which is very important for the synthesis of the protein molecules and we have the mitochondria that is powerhouse of a cell so what will happen which is most important organelle that is very commonly get affected with the tissue injury yes the answer is mitochondria if there is no power supply you will stop watching this video right unless you have a backup of ups you cannot continue to watch a video but we don't have a backup there is only one powerhouse that is mitochondria in the our cells they don't have any other backups right so the mitochondria is the first organelle that is get affected in the cell injury and but remember all these cell organelles are in turn get affected later on because the function of one organelle depends on the other organelle what i mean is the nucleus is dependent on the mitochondria mitochondria in turn depends on the nucleus so there is a mutual uh, understanding is there between these organelles so they are dependent on each other injury at one locus can cause the injury to the subsequent organelles also but the first and foremost important organelle that is get affected is the mitochondria so it's a atp depletion that occurs first in the cell injury event so the answer should be mitochondria third question <laughs> light microscopy changes seen in a heart within 2 hours after an episode of heart attack so we have a clinical scenario here patient has died due to the heart attack what will be the light microscopy changes in the heart within 2 hours you note down the time within 2 hours options infiltration by neutrophils infiltration by macrophages 
formation of granulation tissue the d option nothing what do you think we know that neutrophils are the first cells that will come to rescue whenever there is a inflammatory process is going on the neutrophils are the first cell that will come to rescue that is followed by macrophages right but the time given you see there it is only 2 hours what will be the light microscopy finding do you think it is a formation of granulation tissue absolutely wrong it takes very long time for the granulation tissue to occur so do you think yes neutrophils you know that they are the first cell to come but do you, they come within 2 hours no they will come only after 12 hours so what will be seen in light microscopy you will not see anything so the answer should be nothing my friends neutrophils will begin to appear in the patient with a heart attack only after 12 to 24 hours you cannot see any changes in the left uh, in the light microscopy in a patient who has undergone heart attack whatever you see the changes that is very late light microscopy changes appears very very late so still late is the gross morphological findings so the first thing that will happen actually is the contraction band necrosis that takes almost uh, 4 hours to see that too in the electron microscopy you cannot see that the contraction band necrosis in the light microscopy so if at all you do only after 4 hours you may see some amount of coagulative necrosis and contraction band necrosis at the electron microscopy level you cannot appreciate any changes in the light microscopy so answer should be nothing nothing can be seen within 2 hours after, after MI right got the point we will proceed to the next question earliest transient change following the tissue injury will be neutropenia second option neutrophilia monocytosis lymphocytosis so which cells will come as a first cells as in response to the tissue injury quite easy to answer yes what do you think neutrophilia if you are thinking neutrophilia then you are right so it is a neutrophilia so that's why you know any infections to confirm the infections the physicians will send a blood sample to the pathology laboratory for example if the patient is having acute appendicitis if there is a neutrophilia that adds to their diagnosis yes they are right so neutrophils remember they are the first cells to come into the circulation whenever there is a tissue injury then comes the lymphocytes then comes the the macrophages remember macrophages are little lazy in that way they take their own time to come but once they come they are very efficient phagocytic cells remember we have a two phagocytic cells one is neutrophil second is the macrophages so neutrophils are also phagocytic cells but the most efficient phagocytic cell is the monocytes or the macrophages but they take their own time to come into the tissues so what we see soon after the tissue injury is the neutrophilia neutrophilia so that's why if at all you send the blood sample in any acute inflammatory process you will see neutrophilic leukocytosis wbc count will be raised relative really percentage of neutrophils will be raised so answer should be neutrophilia fifth question all the following statements are true regarding reversible cell injury except option a formation of amorphous densities in the mitochondria diminished generation of adenosine triphosphate that is atp formation of blebs in the plasma membrane detachment of ribosomes from granular endoplasmic reticulum so let us see what this question is meant for so the changes that are seen in the reversible cell injury are all except formation of amorphous densities in the mitochondria so this mitochondria showing the amorphous densities that is the first option second diminished generation of atp yes mitochondria they show atp generation in decreased third formation of the blebs so blebs in the plasma membrane right the fourth detachment of ribosomes so this is rough endoplasmic reticulum so these ribosomes gets detached so all of them are seen in the reversible cell injury except yes definitely as i told atp will be get hampered first 
the first thing that will happen in this cell injury is the ATP degeneration is the generation is get hampered so lesser and lesser amount of ATPs are formed yes that is true second membrane blebs are formed that is also important finding in the cell injury reversible cell injury where you see formation of the membrane blebs cells will the cells will keep on swelling it's all because of the influx of calcium ions and water molecules a flux of a potassium ions right and protein synthesis is get hampered because of the ribosomes they will get detached from these molecules remember the amorphous density formation what is alternate name for this amorphous density formation myelin figures remember these are called as myelin figure formation indicates irreversible cell injury remember that is irreversible cell injury change that is not seen in the reversible cell injury so answer should be a formation of amorphous densities in mitochondrial matrix right but remember that is the electron microscopy findings so this myelin fingers are nothing but the amorphous phospholipid concretions that are seen only with the electron microscopy you cannot make out these myelin figures at the light microscopy level but it is indicative of irreversible injury all the following enzymes get activated with increased intracellular calcium levels i told calcium is most important culprit in the cell injury chapter right so calcium once it enters into the cells it can activate so many enzymes so all these enzymes will be get activated except atpases phospholipases option c proteases option d endonucleases and superoxide dismutases so there are so many enzymes if you don't read these things you cannot take a chance to answer this question so it appears very tough at this particular point right but remember it is little easy whenever calcium enters into the cell remember it gets sequestered in two organelles one in the mitochondria mitochondria it gets sequestered it gets more and more accumulated in the mitochondria second is the endoplasmic reticulum so calcium is very important culprit in this cell injury chapter so once calcium get enters into the cell it activates so many enzymes atpas are the one which will break down the atp that are synthesized by mitochondria yes that's correct option phospholipases they are the one which will break down the cytoskeletal membrane the protein network protein cytoskeleton is broken down by activation of the phospholipases that also will be done by the calcium ions proteases again they also important for breaking down this cytoskeletal protein phospholipases not only that they will also break down this phospholipid layer not only cell layer individual organelles also will have a phospholipid layer that is also broken down into pieces because of activation of the phospholipases then the fourth enzyme endonucleases so that's an enzyme which will break down this dna dna undergoes fragmentation what you call this fragmentation of our dna it is karyorexis that takes place that also will be done by increased levels of the calcium ions see the fifth option superoxide dismutase do you remember that is an antioxidant yes that is no relation with the increased calcium levels so remember the four enzymes that are get activated are atpas phospholipases proteases and endonucleases it's the answer should be superoxide dismutase which is important antioxidant so that is the answer right proceed to the next question cell injury occurs due to all except decrease atp increase the cytosolic calcium membrane damage mitochondrial dysfunction fifth option increased intracellular potassium ions which is the answer straight forward just little bit think decreased atp yes because of mitochondria is get affected increase cytosolic calcium that's what i told calcium is very important ion that causes the damage membrane damage because of the activation of the phospholipases mitochondrial dysfunction because of the atpas are synthesized once the calcium enters into the cells increase intracellular potassium no potassium goes out of a cell so what ions will enter into the cell calcium enters into the cell along with the calcium water molecules will enter into the cell that's why the cells will keep on swelling so the cell size increases 
but important ion that goes out is the potassium. Potassium goes out of a cell. The answer should be increased intracellular potassium. So there will be a decreased actually. Right? So answer is E. Which of the following is not a cell adaptation? You know the different types of cell adaptations, I hope. Hyperplasia, that is increasing the number of the cells. Metaplasia, where one type of cell is totally converted into another adult epithelium. Dysplasia, disordered arrangement of her cells. Metamorphosis, what is that metamorphosis? It is total conversion of one type of epithelium into totally another type of adult epithelial cells. So it is little different from metaplasia. Example for metamorphosis, imagine the cirrhosis cases where ETO cells, vitamin A storage cells will be converted totally into different types of cells that is myofibroblast and then keep on secreting the collagen. So that is the example of the metamorphosis. Then neoplasia. What is neoplasia? New growth. New growth that is not a type of cellular adaptation, right? So hyperplasia, metaplasia, dysplasia, metamorphosis, they are all the actually the cellular adaptations. Actually metamorphosis will not usually include in the cellular adaptations. But neoplasia is not at all a type of adaptation. It is totally a wrong process that is going inside the body. So don't think neoplasia is adaptation. It's not. So neoplasia should be the answer, right? Yes, it is the neoplasia. Yes, we have a clinical scenario here. Uh, you have a similar type of question. A 50 year old man had a long standing hypertension and chronic renal failure. He was not on regular medication. He died from heart failure. Autopsy, he had a large heart and weighted up to 540 grams. Size of heart is most likely to be result of which of the following process involving the myocardial fibers. Choices are hypertrophy, hyperplasia, fatty infiltration, fatty degeneration, liquefactive necrosis. So this is a case of long standing hypertension and not under control. So if at all the person dies, what will be the scene? So the weight is see the 540 grams is there. So heart is really large. So normally it will be around 450 grams. In females it is less around 350 grams. But here 540 that is almost it is uh, increased in its weight. So what is the changes? What do you expect? Hypertrophy. If you are thinking of hypertrophy, you are right. So it is a left ventricular hypertrophy. Second option you see here, hyperplasia. Don't expect hyperplasia in the heart because heart muscles cannot divide further. So never expect hyperplasia. Fatty infiltration, yes, it occurs whenever person will be of long standing, uh, you know, starvation. Then there is a change of a fatty change can be seen even in the heart. We see so many autopsy cases where fat is getting infiltrated in the heart and we call it as tiger defect of a heart. We see alternate uh, yellow colored band and brown colored heart. So tiger defect is seen in the fatty changes in the heart. So that is not due to the hypertension. Fatty degeneration, no, it's not an answer. Liquefactive necrosis never takes place in the heart. It's only coagulative necrosis in the heart. So answer should be A, hypertrophy. Yes, left ventricular hypertrophy, very common entity in the untreated hypertensive patients. Last question of this session. Which of the following cellular adaptation can lead to neoplasia? So we know that we have a different types of cellular adaptation, but some of these adaptation can lead to neoplasia. They can even turn into malignant if you don't treat them. So let us have a look. Atrophy, decrease in the cell size as well as organelle undergo decrease in the size as such. Hypertrophy, increase in the cell size, organ also will increase in size. Hyperplasia, increase in the number of the cells. Metamorphosis, as I told, example, only one example, that is, ETO cells will be converted into myofibroblast. So, which one do you think can lead to neoplasia? Yes, hyper hyper atrophy, hypertrophy, they are not much problematic. They will not cause any neoplasia. Its answer is hyperplasia. So, remember, 
hyperplasia is the one which can lead to malignancy because hyperplasia is most of the time it is related to the endocrine effects so it can lead to for example that's what happens in patients with the you know benign prostatic hyperplasia and even with the uh, endocrine stimulation like uh, follicular hyperplasia most importantly it is the uh, endometrial hyperplasia if at all it turns into be the complex atypical hyperplasia then there is very high chance of development of the endometrial carcinoma so answer should be hyperplasia yes answer is c remember hyperplasia metaplasia dysplasia all these three are actually types of cellular adaptations but they can lead to development of the malignancies hyperplasia example best example is the endometrial hyperplasia atypical endometrial hyperplasia especially if it is complex can lead to endometrial carcinoma metaplasia example barrett's esophagitis where it can lead to the adenocarcinoma of the esophagus dysplasia where we use this word dysplasia very commonly in the uterine cervix so cn carcinoma uh, cervical intraepithelial neoplasia that is cn changes are mainly it indicates the dysplastic changes so that can also lead to the squamous cell carcinoma of the uterine cervix so remember these three adaptations cellular adaptations when the irritation continues when the irritant continues chronic in, uh, inflammation will continues it can turn into the neoplasia that's about the first session we will continue the interesting mcq discussion in the second session